All right, we are back here talking college football championship week coming up here on Saturday. Join me today, uh, great friend of the podcast, Bill Barron of the Sporting News here. Bill, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming on here. A lot of fun so far with this season here. Like, Give me your general thoughts here, what we've seen so far this season. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, there wasn't that season-defining upset, but it was a fun regular season. It, you know, I always kind of joke that it comes up with the same answers to the test. Um, yeah, Georgia, Alabama, Michigan, Ohio State, uh, that, that was the big game. And then Georgia, Alabama this week. I mean, the Pac-12 has been a nice surprise. And then, you know, Florida State, despite the Jordan Travis injury, and Texas finally getting back so to speak, and not being the butt of a joke. So, yeah, it's been it was good, and it should be a fun conference championship weekend. This will probably be the best conference championship weekend we've had in a while. Yeah, for sure. Get a couple of quick hits on a couple of things here. What's your take on the James Madison situation? Obviously, they were undefeated for a while. They tried to appeal, be eligible for a bigger bowl. They were denied. So what do you think about the James Madison thing? Well, I'm glad they get in. They're going to get to play in a bowl, and, and sometimes those things, work themselves out i didn't think it was worth a legal battle with i mean for the on the ncaa's part just let them play in a bowl game 41 of those things and you know it, i get the intent of that ncaa transition rule but that was made at a different time it's 2023 i don't think it's just a different college football world and you let those schools play in those games yeah that's for sure i agree with you on that one here the Jim Harbaugh suspension here, obviously, for the whole like spying scandal and trying to steal information from other teams. Like He got a, sus- a suspension for three games this year. Who knows what happens beyond that? What do you think about what's happened with Harbaugh? Well, I mean, that's a loaded question. That, that, that would take <laughs> probably a half hour to answer. Um, you know, they, they definitely – it happened. You know, and they, they, there's still going to be some mileage to that, I'm sure, when the NCAA investigation is done. But – Connor Stallions is gone. Chris Partridge is gone. Kim Harbaugh served the suspension, may serve more. Um, but in the present tense, got a really good football team that took care of business last weekend against Ohio State. Won the Big Ten, Big Ten Championship. Kept all the program goals in line. And, you know, it's a really good football team that he has this year. And they're, it's a player-led football team. You know, we can talk about Harbaugh all you want, but uh, – Blake Corum, J.J. McCarthy, there's a lot of maturity with those guys, and it showed on Saturday in the biggest win of the year. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of another coach here who made headlines this year, Deion Sanders at Colorado. Obviously, he's the talk of college football early in the season. They're getting, I think, big Sports Illustrated features early on, and then they basically just fall apart, and they don't even make a bowl. So uh, what do you think of the uh, Deion situation? I think, you know, uh, college football fans the ca- it pulled in a lot of casual football fans which was good for the sport it was good uh, exciting month of the season but it also was a test case and you can't skip a few there was a few steps that were skipped and obviously you know i think colorado going from one win to four or five you know that's good you know they got they improved their win total there's also a lot of work to do they were four and eight right so yeah. four and eight, and then uh, I think that's what we predicted them to be. And to me, that's a win. But the way that they went four and eight probably doesn't feel like a win because of all that momentum they built early in the season. Yeah, I would agree with you on that here. And uh, we have obviously championship games coming up here this weekend. We have our group of undefeated teams: we have Georgia, Michigan, Washington, Florida State's in the mix here. Ohio State, Alabama, Oregon, Texas are all lurking there with one loss here. How many teams do you can say right now playoff locks before we play these games? None. That's what makes it awesome. It's like, I mean, Michigan and Georgia would be probably the closest thing too, but they could lose. I mean, Georgia could lose to Alabama. Uh, Michigan could get in a fifth fight with Iowa, and Iowa, if a couple turnovers went their way, I don't think that's going to happen. But, I mean, the rest of them, Washington, Oregon, rematch of a toss-up game. Florida State. Dealing with the Jordan Travis thing. Texas, I mean, Oklahoma State beat them the last two years. So I would say nobody's a lot. That's what makes it so exciting. Yeah, it is very exciting here. A lot of big games this weekend for sure. Let's go to the Pac-12. That's the first one up on Friday night here. Washington, Oregon. They played a classic earlier this year that Washington won. Now we see them go the uh, play again for the Pac-12 title here. Is this a spot you feel like that? 
This is the winner gets in. Do you feel like there's a shot that they both miss out, even if Oregon upsets Washington? Well, I mean, there's a lot of scenarios out there. There's at least like 10 or 11, and you just don't know how it's going to shake out. I, I think the winner would be in really good position, especially I mean, if Washington in, wins, they're in. They're not going to turn away an unbeaten conference champion. Same deal with Florida State. So, I mean, both of those things are at work. Oregon, I think, have a really good chance because of the way they're playing, and they only lost the one game by three points. And, you know, it, it would be a chance to correct that mistake and not to mention that if they do win, there's a good chance that, that Bo Nix wins the Heisman Trophy. So all of those things at work makes for a very interesting um, scenario for the Ducks. So, yeah, I think better than good chance the winner of that game is going. But, again, there's a little bit of chaos factor at work this weekend. Yeah, absolutely here. And go to the Big 12 title game here. Because obviously the only t- team you're watching here is Texas. They're playing Oklahoma for the Big 12 title here. They have one loss. What does Texas need to happen if they could? Do they have a path to sneak in if they win this game? I just need Florida State to lose. That's really it. I mean, and they don't really need Alabama to win because even though they beat Alabama, that would complicate that scenario where we start to wonder, oh, how are they going to leave the SEC champion out? So, yeah, I mean, that's one with them that definitely is worth watching. I still think that Texas has a really good shot. And they've got it, but they've got to take care of business on the field first. That's a good Oklahoma State team, an unpredictable Oklahoma State team that definitely has uh, won some games and they should have or shouldn't have, and won some games like that they probably shouldn't have won and lost some games that they shouldn't have lost. Yeah, I, I see that a lot of here. Definitely interesting with Texas. They do send the game here. And SEC, I think, is pretty straightforward here with Georgia. They win, they're in. If Alabama wins this game, what does that mean for both of those teams? Well, I mean, like I just sketched out the one scenario where they could possibly not be in, but I doubt. I mean, they'll put somebody in. I think the SEC is in the best position because Georgia's on this win streak. The ratings on that game will be super high. Uh, good football team. And Alabama has found something with Jalen Milrow. If you told me Alabama was in this position, Said, yeah, maybe they win eleven and one, but they're in this position, and if they win, there's a shot that uh, Rowe could go to New York City as a Heisman finalist. I would have said, "What are you talking about?" So, I, I mean, definitely a great turn of events for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, is there any scenario you could see where both of them get in, or you think this would be a shot where, like, if Alabama somehow wins, they could take Georgia's spot? No, there are. I mean, we sketched a bunch of them out. I mean, there they would need some combination of loss between if Texas were to lose to Oklahoma State and Florida State were to lose, and uh, and then you'd have okay, those two conferences are out. Then if Michigan, and then you would just put Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, and the Washington, Oregon winner. Pretty easy, honestly. But that then that's the scenario that absolutely could unfold over the next few days. Yeah, absolutely. Here, I feel like that's a nightmare scenario for Ohio State, which is the biggest team like in the mix for the for the uh, college football playoff that is not playing this weekend. Sort of like last year, where they had everything break their way and they got in. Do you feel like this could happen again? Or do you feel like they are in a lot of trouble here, considering they can't make a chance to improve their resume ahead of this uh, conference? They need they need a very specific thing to happen, and it's they need five results to go their way, and it's not going to be easy because they need Washington to win against Oregon, knock them out. And even, I mean, that's the least important one. They could still get in a debate with a one-loss Washington. They need Michigan to win because if Michigan loses as a one-loss team, Michigan has their head-to-head on Ohio State. They need Georgia to beat Alabama. That's probably going to happen. They need Texas to lose to Oklahoma State, and they need Florida State to lose. So it's not, when you really sit and think about that scenario, it doesn't sound ridiculous at all. Yeah, and that would be crazy if, if it's two years in a row this happens where they don't have to play the last weekend and get in. I'm, this is, I think this is the other thing we're going to miss we have the expanded playoff because when we get to this point next year, Ohio State's going to be in comfortably. not going to worry about any of this. Right. I mean, it's going to feel like the, they'll be the version of a Kansas or North Carolina or Duke, you know, like kind of like the proverbial one seed every year in the NCAA tournament. They won't have a lot to worry about in those years but 
in this event, yeah, they're they're going to need a back door to open, and they're the only team that's done it twice to have that back door open for them. So it wouldn't surprise me if it happened again. Yeah, for sure. Here, let's go to the ACC. So obviously, Florida State's a very interesting position because they finished the regular season on the feed, but they lost their quarterback Jordan Travis two weeks ago. He had to fight tooth and nail, get by a five win Florida team last week. Now they play Louisville, which is ten and two, coming off a loss here. Do you would you be worried if you're Florida State? Like if you win this game, it's very like close and they don't look great. That even if they are undefeated, they could get left out. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I can see the sentiment behind it. I understand everything you just said. And, you know, I get it that they're, they're rolling with a backup quarterback. The offense didn't look good last week, but they still got the win. And there's a lot of playoff hopefuls that are going to be rooting for Louisville this weekend. I just can't see the committee turning away a five, you know, a power five undefeated team, regardless of how they got there. doesn't matter. They got there. And that's why I think I wouldn't count on them being left out. Yeah, I do think it's a fascinating debate for the committee because this is the first time they've ever really had it in football where, I mean, we see in the basketball tournament where, like, if a team loses a star player, it might get dinged a few seed lines, whereas this one, there's only four teams in here. If they feel like Florida State won't be competitive without their quarterback, it would be an interesting debate for them to have. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, it, it, it will. And I think one of that is when we do the point spread arguments. Like, for example, in this scenario we're talking about, yeah, if Florida State played Georgia, what would the spread be? Probably about 15, 15 and a half. If Texas played them, would they be a lower underdog? Yes. But you have to earn it on the field. And the committee, I just don't see them. They could, I suppose, play four, four very best teams and go with Texas. But the ramifications of that and the distrust it would cause with one of its power five conferences, I don't know. I just don't see it. All right, so if we had to make the call today here, who would you see making the college football playoff right now? Who do you think gets those four spots? I, I think, uh, you know, I think it's one of those things where I, it's going to be Georgia, going to be Michigan, going to be, I think Oregon does beat Washington, and I think Florida State wins. So I think they end up putting Florida State in over Texas. I picked all the favorites this week to win straight up. Now, there's room for chaos. There always is, and there might be room for an upset in there. But so I think inevitably that'll be your forward, and they'll move the seating around a little bit to make it Georgia versus Florida State and Michigan versus Oregon. Yeah, I do hope the Pac-12 gets the team in, though, especially considering like how that league has sort of been destroyed. It would be nice to have them have one sort of last legacy moment to finally get a team back in the fo- in the college football playoff. Right, yeah. I mean, it's it's been quite a year for them. The quarterback play has been really entertaining. The offenses have been awesome. Uh, you know, it's going away, which I have my own feelings about. I don't really like it. But, you know, obviously, it's been a great year for the conference and the quarterbacks. You may have the Heisman Trophy winner. You've had consistently some of the great best games of the season with these teams. And, uh, you know, now they'll get their first playoff team since 2016, which is a pretty remarkable year for the conference. Yeah, for sure. My last question is this, obviously. You have the Heisen Trophy coming up. A lot of interesting candidates. You mentioned Bo Nix being a guy who could get in the mix here and win this if Oregon ends up winning the Pac-12. Like, Who do you think are the Heisen favorites right now? Uh, I mean, Nix, Michael Penix, Jaden Daniels. Those would be the three. Um, and I don't know. I mean, if Jalen Milrow goes out and beats Georgia, he'll work into the conversation. I don't know that it'll win it but he'll definitely be in that conversation if he can end Georgia's winning streak and do what he did in the final month of the season and the Iron Bowl moment and the LSU moment and the, you know, go out and beat Georgia. I, that would be stealing a Heisman in the last six weeks. Not saying it's going to happen, but not saying it can't happen. Yes, yeah, sure. Be a lot of fun this weekend coming up here in the final bowl season afterwards, Bill. Thanks for all the time. I really appreciate it. People want to follow your coverage, your college football for the sporting news, and follow you on social media. How can I do that? Yeah, I'm at BillBender92 at SportingNews.com. I'm excited about this weekend. It's always good to touch base with you. I know we do this a couple times during the year and really appreciate it. Absolutely, Bill. Thanks for all the time. I really appreciate getting your college level insight every couple of times this year.